look upon my work and despair. So I know that you disapprove of swearing. Right. So I'll sort that. You are a boring F star star. NerdErotic.com. The only thing left to talk about with Doctor Who these days is arguing over the shattered pieces laying all over the floor. Doctor Who is Humpty Dumpty. Now, the Access Media has had the hardest time with this show. They cannot figure out how they have been so wrong since the announcement of Jodie Whittaker. If this show had ended after the first episode of Series 11, probably would have been fine. Unfortunately for them, Season 11 continued, and unfortunately for us, we got a season 12 that completely destroyed the show. There is no putting it back together. So what we end up doing is discussing what went wrong and the access media cannot or will not accept it. Now I am lucky. I can talk about whatever the hell I want on this channel. And that's why I think a lot of us have connected over here through my live streams, through the videos, because we can say things the access media will not that's why we get this question from the Access Media rolled out every six months or so. This time it comes from Cinema Blend and Mick Jost. Why do so many people dislike Doctor Who's female doctor? That's some very interesting wording there. She has a name, Mick, and it's the first female doctor played by Jodie Whittaker, who we will lovingly call Dr. Karen. Before we get started, if you've somehow accidentally come across this video, please make sure you are still subscribed. YouTube is doing its annual old account cleanse, and there is always collateral damage. If you're new to the channel or you've been coming around for a while, I would like to humbly ask you to please consider subscribing if you haven't already and liking and sharing the videos. It really does help independent content creators stay competitive against the giant corporations that YouTube has prioritized. If you do this with your favorite YouTuber as well, I'm sure they would appreciate it as much as I I do. Now, you know how this game is played. Access Media constructs a straw man to shame large portions of a fan base of a franchise that has been recently sacrificed on the altar of agenda. And again, Doctor Who remains the best and worst example of this. That's why we are just arguing once again over the pieces. Doctor Who is now a couple of seasons into Jodie Whittaker's tenure. And while some minds have been changed on her time on the BBC series, other fans still aren't convinced the vast majority Whitaker and the overall idea of a female incarnation of the doctor is unacceptable. And it's looking like nothing will change their views on that. Well, you've had two seasons to do that and you haven't. Why is that? Is that the fans fault or is it Jody Whitaker and Chris Chibnall's fault? I know the answer to this question. So do you. And so does Mick. We're all well aware of the first female doctor played by Jodie Whittaker, who we will lovingly call Dr. Karen, has been a subject of controversy within the Doctor Who fandom. But why do so many people hate Whittaker's take on the character? Beyond the fact that the doctor is now a woman, here are some of the main points those who aren't on board with season 11 and 12 of Doctor Who tend to bring up when discussing where the series, in their eyes, went wrong. She represents wokeness. Yes, the show is woke, but a better description would be it is filled with intersectionality. Doctor Who fans who disagree with the show's casting of the first female doctor played by Jodie Whittaker, who we will lovingly call Dr. Karen, have expressed their feelings that the gender swap wasn't a move made out of necessity to the show's story, but rather one made in a response to the current political climate. That's the truth. Are you saying that's not the truth? Are you saying this was a genuine narrative story decision that came organically that is to say some believe no some know the decision to cast Whitaker in the role wasn't made because there was any special plans in place for the change but rather because the show wished to be more politically correct with an unprecedented and progressive casting the casting would appeal to the current Hollywood trend of being more inclusive and signal to potential fans that Doctor Who has gotten with the times well, you're not wrong about the unprecedented part. We've had the worst written episodes and we've had an unprecedented ratings drop. Doctor Who has never been a show to shy away from progressive stories. And you're not wrong there again. So what has changed? Why are people who were completely okay with progressive stories before not okay with them now? Because the show doesn't work. And even went as far as to suggest the Doctor's 
sexual preference was fluid in its first rebooted season. Yep, you're right. And still, nobody had a problem with it. Fans hung on for that, but the female lead paired with season 11's constant touching on prominent social issues pushed some away from the series. Please show me where the first female doctor, played by Jodie Whittaker, who we will lovingly call Dr. Karen, constantly touched you. It's hard to say if any of this crowd would return if the doctor went back to being male, though there's always a crowd that hops out with the casting of any new doctor. Uh, but this is a completely different scenario now, isn't it? Fan dropout is more or less inevitable when there's a change in a lead actor across all franchises, even with a show where it happens as frequently as Doctor Who. Indeed, every show experiences diminishing returns. But again, Doctor Who isn't just any show. Now, this is a conversation we could have had after Series 11, I think many of us were willing to just forget the Jody era and pick up a new later on. But Season 12 happened, and it can't unhappen. You can't take that away. Even if you wipe it out of canon, even if you reverse Jody's entire era, the damage is done. Well, this is an understatement. It's too big of a change for the franchise. Doctor Who is a show where the story and situations are always changing, but some things have remained solid in the show's 50-year history. The Doctor's change may not have had the same response from everybody, but there was a universal acknowledgement that this was a big change for the franchise. For some, the change was just too much and made them rethink their following of the show in a major way. You mean by not watching anymore? That's rethinking thinking for others they straight up said they were out from the moment it was announced and they have not looked back since yet we're not talking about them are we we're talking about a show that has gotten with the times we're talking about the era of the first female doctor played by jody whittaker who we will lovingly call dr karen a show made for an audience that doesn't exist the doctor has historically been a white male what man this guy's observant. It would be foolish to assume the past precedent played no role in the backlash and that Jodie Whittaker's casting had nothing to do with the bucking of the status quo of Doctor Who. Since the beginning of the series, the Doctor has always been a white male, and while the show has changed in numerous ways since then, that has remained a constant. And it still does. Play intersectional games, win intersectional prizes. That audience that the BBC is trying to satisfy out there will never watch the show, yet they constantly call for changes. The BBC gives them to them, and they will call for more and continue not to watch the show. And while the Doctor being played by a male wasn't a factor in several adventures in the modern reboot, it has a few key storylines. Various love interests like Rose Tyler and River Song were established as a heterosexual relationship. We can't have any of that heteronormative behavior in television anymore. And the gender switch of the Doctor resulted in a can of worms that some viewers may not have been comfortable in addressing. So what you're saying is all the Doctor Who fans who have enjoyed this show for decades all of a sudden became ists and phobes overnight once they swapped the genders. Obviously, that isn't true. Obviously, no Whovian gives a crap what color the Doctor is, but a lot of us think the Doctor should just be a bloke. Again, that doesn't make you sexist. Now, there was a can of worms opened up by Chris Chibnall and the BBC, and that's part of the reason the female doctor hasn't worked, because Chris Chibnall doesn't feel comfortable asking some obvious questions that people have been asking for a couple of years due to political correctness. But again, I'll ask a couple of them. Can the doctor get pregnant? Well, the answer is obviously yes. Then, if that's true, in An Unearthly Child, is the doctor really a grandpa or a grandma? Ah, Christ, I just gave him another idea doesn't really matter the show's broken anyway but i'll leave the questions right there and we'll just move on some merely thought the change was unrealistic given the doctor had never mentioned being a woman or was it revealed as a possibility in the 50 plus years of being on television so the change may have felt like disrespect to the show's history you think there's a lot of things the fans could have moved past including the first female doctor played by jody whittaker but they messed with william hartnell they messed with the canon and now the show is broken 
The first female doctor played by Jodie Whittaker, who we will lovingly call Dr. Karen, is the product of a soft reboot. Well, at first it might have looked like that, but now we know Chris Chibnall was just removing any familiarity so we could glory in the greatness of Jodie Whittaker before completely dismantling the show's mythology to cement Jodie Whittaker's legacy while keeping the door open to destroy more of it, which is coming, and we will talk about that in a moment. That being said, it can be hard to disassociate the first female doctor played by Jodie Whittaker, who we will lovingly call Dr. Karen, from the situation when she represents the biggest change in Series 11. The common fan may not be up on the whole changes with the showrunner theme, visual effects, and the general concept of a soft reboot to try and invite a new audience into the show. They just know the show wasn't the same, and the most obvious evidence of that was the female doctor running around on the screen and calling her companions fam. For that reason, I feel that some backlash directed at Whitaker isn't so much about her performance or portrayal, but rather the overall change in the franchise she came to be the face of. I'll try to keep this as simple as possible after those mental gymnastics. First and foremost, you don't change the gender of a character that's been around for 50 years and call it a soft reboot. You also don't change the gender of a character that's been around for 50 years and not explore it in a genuine way, not even once. It's also not very wise of the lead actress to insult the fandom, the legacy of the show, and not show it any respect on the way in. And the elephant in the room? You don't change the gender of a character that's been male for 50 years and expect it to be the same. Because it won't. It doesn't work. And we've had plenty of evidence to prove that. And if you're not convinced now, wait for Series 13. And the worst mistake of all, and we have seen this with three franchises now, Putting your own personal partisan agenda ahead of your character and your audience. There's a reason I put this portion of the Timeless Children at every single one of my videos because it is the perfect visual representation of the first female doctor played by Jodie Whittaker, who we will lovingly call Dr. Karen, completely destroying the show. And it also tells us what's to come. They're going to take all of those unknown regenerations and pepper them throughout the Doctor's history because Piers Wenger at the BBC and Chris Chibnall cannot leave well enough alone. You see, while we have a problem with the Chris Chibnall era, the BBC has a problem with everything that came before. The Doctor is a male character and that's the only way it really works. Maybe it would have worked with a different actress and a different writer, but we will never know. I doubt the show will get another chance. It truly is broken. You don't go in and change that much canon and expect the fans to stick around. Yeah, sure, you can erase the last two years. You can retcon everything or just forget it. Doesn't matter. You can't unmake the soup. The damage is done. Doctor Who is experiencing its own last Jedi. Guess we're going to have a lot of time to talk about it over the next couple of years after the Christmas special because there's not going to be, thankfully, any new Doctor Who anytime soon. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, I thank you for listening this long. Please check out my alternate channel, Nerdrotic Live, where all my live streams go. I just recorded an RIP Doctor Who live stream with Bulls Trek, Philip Morris, and others. It will be linked in the description. I'd like to thank Perry Chan for the clips. Everyone have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. I've come across a lot of psychos, but none as f***ing boring as you. Nerdrotic.com, please subscribe.